IAM is an AWS service to manage authentication and authorization. In this video, I'm going to explain what exactly is an IAM role, its policies, and what is the trust policy in an IAM. Let me first try to explain in very simple words what an IAM role does in AWS. Let's suppose you have two accounts as shown on this diagram, account one and account two. In account one, we have a principal, which can be a user role or even the full account. So what we want this principal to do is to do some tasks in account two. That task could be starting an EC2 instance, stopping an RDS database or anything to do with any AWS service in account two. For that to happen, we need to do some steps in both account one and account two. Starting from account one, you need to give permission STS assume role to the principal in account one. one once that's done, it's, it means that this principal can as, assume the role. Now, which role? Role will be in account two. So you will create an IAM role and attach a policy to that role. That policy in the account two, which will be attached to a role, will determine what actions can be performed in this account too. So for example, if you want this role in account two to start an EC2 instance or stop an RDS database, you would need to specify those permissions in that policy. And then you would need to create a trust policy which will allow the principal in account one to assume this role in account two. So this is what we are going to see in this video. Now let's go through some of the examples as how exactly we can write these trust policies and what could we do with them. In this first example, we have this policy attached to a role in account two. In, and this is a trust policy. In this trust policy, we are enabling the account one to assume this role in account two as shown in the line number nine. Because on line number nine, we have the action as STS assume role. Principal is our account one on line number seven in this policy. And on line five, we are allowing this account to assume this role. Notice the word root in line seven. This root means that anything in the account one with STS assume role permission can assume this role in account two. And don't confuse it with the root user of that account, which is basically the sign in identity when you create a new AWS account. Now let's look at another example. In this example two trust policy, the principal element, element indicates which other principals can assume this IAM role. In the previous example, account one represented the AWS account number for that AWS account, which was account one. And that allowed that principal in account one with STS assume role permission to assume this role. But in this example on your screen, this trust policy would un only allow the IAM role test role from the account one to assume this role. So as you can see on line number seven, I have specified the role as test role. Okay. Let's look at another example. In this example, trust policy, we are using condition. The condition in trust policy sets additional requirements for the principal trying to assume the role. In this example, we are allowing user test user on line number seven to only use this role if that user used MFA or multi-factor authentication. And that we have specified in the condition from line number 10 to line number 13. And if you look at line number 12, we have set the condition multi-factor authentic um, auth present to true. Okay, let's look at the next example. 
in this example we are restricting the usage of this role from the account one based on the ip cider ranges and again we are using the condition and we are saying that from the account account one the role test role can assume this role in account two but only if the principal is coming from this source ip range which is 16 and this is quite a broad range you can narrow it down for example if you just want one single ip from account one to assume this role you will just write third slide 32 here and the ip address good next look at the next example and this is my personal favorite in this example the trust policy requires that i am principals in aws account 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 one have the value of their principal tag application equal to marketing so whatever the resources in account one who which have the tag application and the tag value marketing would be able to assume this role now this is also called as attribute based access control or ABAC in short tags are attribute here so you need to have a standard secure tagging regime where you must ensure who can set the tags as your IAM trust policies are based on these tags as shown in this example. In this example, we are using something different than the allow. If you look at the previous example, we on line number five, we are using the effect allow. But in this example, we are using effect as deny as shown in line number five. This example trust policy denies any assumption of this role except by principles that are member of our organization org1 as shown on line number 21 uh, line number 12. AWS so org is basically our AWS organization. AWS organization lets you create a standardized multi-account structure. So by using this deny policy you can deny access to any principal outside of your organization. On line number 12, we are specifying this organization ID. Note the interesting bit on line number 15. What line number 15 is saying that even though we have denied anyone outside of our organization to assume, to assume this role, we are still allowing AWS services to assume this role. In other words, for example, if you want an EC2 instance to assume this role, it should still be able to do it due to this line number 15 directive. Yeah. In this next example, we are using another very useful uh, attribute of IAM trust policy, which is called as external ID as shown on line number 12. These days, Many organizations use SaaS or software as service products to manage their clouds in one way or another. For example, your company might be using a SaaS product to ensure cloud security posture management, or your company might be using a third party tool for your cost management, which need access to your AWS account. And so in order for that provider, the third party provider to assume the role in your own account, you can establish trust between your account and that provider in a trust policy by using this external ideas on line number 12. So that provider will give you an external ID with the role and you will be using that. That will ensure that the call to assume this role is coming from that provider. So these are some of the very common use cases related to IAM trust policies in the cross account setup. I hope this was useful. If you have any comments or feedback, please put them in the comments. Thank you.